activity bundling is a really accessible tool. Um, you know, some of it's been made uh, popular by James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, but it's essentially looking at the things that we do in our life and trying to figure out ways to add, you know, pleasurable components. And generally that's all it takes, right? That nudge to be like, wait, I can do that, you know? And so it could be something that's kind of a routine task where you add elements, you know, either bringing friends in, like the, the three constructs that you can really play with are the environment that you're doing it, the friends you're doing it with, or the way that you're doing it, right? Changing up the activity itself. And if with just a little bit of creativity, you know, you can often get there, right? An example that I bring up in the book is that I hated physical rehab, you know, with regards to that hip replacement that I got. And so I was, I don't know, you know, for the listeners that have gone through that, it's such a routine thing, you know, especially if you're used to exercise, they put two pound ankle weights, you know, I mean, just two, you know, one hour of the same movement. And so it was like watching paint dry. And I had a young da daughter and, um, essentially to make a long story short, realize I didn't need to be in there. You know, I'm from the fitness space. I have access to folks that are uh, personal trainers that, you know, are able to create uh, medically appropriate moves. So I found a dance instructor that could help me rehab, but then also, you know, brought in my daughter and we had these amazing dance classes for one hour a week instead of sitting in, you know, four white walls and, and you know, staring at metal equipment. And so it's just those little things like, what are the things that I hate doing and are there ways to do them differently? And that are going to be as unique as the individuals listening, but they're always, you know, the stories are the best, the more creative you can get, you know, to just change these things that are not that fun at all. And the, you know, these ways of creating, I mean, those memories I created with my daughter, we still look back at them and we relive them when we reminisce in them, right? Variable hedonics is just the science that suggests we should add elements of variability to our lives, right? The more that we can index opportunities for fun by being a bit deliberate about it, you know, we invite in more spontaneity. It's just a numbers game, really, right? And so the reason that becomes important to geek out on the neuroscience a little bit is when we know our, when our lives become too routine, we stop encoding information. And so you can essentially look at our brains like a hard drive, right? And so if you had 300 of the same files, would your computer keep all 300 or would it essentially, you know, do that shortcuts are all over the place and keep the one file? Our brain does the same. And why that becomes problematic if we're not adding variety to our lives is that when we look back in the rear view mirror after 10 years of doing the same thing, that's all we kind of remember. Like, oh yeah, I did that thing. You know, the example I, I, I use is, do you remember the way you drove to work or do you remember the 300 times you drove to work, right? And that, that's true for almost anything we habituate. <laughs>